All right, hey, how's it going? So, so far we've been looking at uh, proportions and ratios from one triangle to the next. This section is going to be about uh, proportions of sides within a triangle. And when talking about that, there's three things to keep in mind. And this is the basis for all of trigonometry, which is the study of triangles. We have three main ratios that we're going to look at. The first is tangent. Okay, tangent is described as the opposite side over the adjacent side. It's a ratio. It can be greater than one. Um, it could also be less than one. Okay. Um, the second ratio we're going to talk about is sine, which is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. This ratio must be equal. Uh, it must be equal to or less than one. And the reason for that is because a side can never be greater than the hypotenuse. Um, it can be equal to 1 only if it's not really a triangle. So if it's just a straight line, then it's equal to 1. And then the third side is cosine, which is adjacent side over hypotenuse. Um, and so the same, the same rule applies. It can, it's never greater than 1 um, because the side length can never be greater than the hypotenuse. Um, a quick note about uh, cosine is that it's actually just the complement of sine, that's exactly what it means. So whatever uh, sine is, the basically the rest of the values within the triangle is your cosine. So let's look at, um, we're starting with tangent, which is a good place to start. I'm going to skip over the um, examples and such, you can read through that. This will just be a tutorial video, I'm going over the exercises. Okay, so number one, write the tangent ratios for the angles angle A and angle B, okay? So that's what we're going to work on. Um, let's start with number one here. So using this triangle, angle A is here. So the tangent would be the opposite side. So the side opposite that angle over the adjacent side. So when you're, when you're doing these, it can be confusing at first to identify what's the hypotenuse the hypotenuse and what's the adjacent side or the opposite side. The hypotenuse will always be the longest side, okay? So since the square root of 5 is larger than 2, and also because this line is just seemingly longer than this side, this is the hypotenuse. Another way to tell for sure that this is the hypotenuse is because it's across the largest angle. This is a 90 degree angle. These other angles are clearly smaller than 90 degrees. So the hypotenuse will be AB. So um, the tangent for angle A will be the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay, the opposite side is going to be CB, and the adjacent side will be CA. And since we have values for that, we can write that down. Um, tangent, so tangent of a is equal to 1 over 2. That's exactly how you would write it. Number 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, angle B. Angle B is down here. So remember how I said your tangents can be larger than 1. Okay. Because the hypotenuse is not a factor in this. So angle B is down here. The opposite side will be CA. The adjacent side will be CB. So that will be a 2 over 1 equals 2. So tangent of B equals 2. Notice how these are reciprocals of each other. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Number 2. Angle A is down here. The opposite side is 2. And the adjacent side is 3. Notice how this is the hypotenuse, AB. So we're not going to be using that. So tangent of A equals 2 over 3. And then tangent of B equals 3 over 2. Again, the reciprocals. Number 3. The um, A is over here. The opposite side is 15. The adjacent side is also 15 because it's isosceles. So that means it's 1. And then tangent of B, same thing. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. Okay, moving on. Four, find the value of x, the nearest tenth. Okay, so here we have our triangle. This time we're given the degreeage. 
43 degrees. And I'm going to find out what x is. So the way I can do this is say tangent of 43. That's what the angle is. Tangent of 43 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And then to solve for x, I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. That will undo the fraction. So I get x equals 12 times tangent of 43. And then you go to your calculator. The tangent button is in different places, depending on your calculator. Um, what I'm going to do here is make sure that my tangent is in um, uh, degrees as opposed to radians. So that is uh, here in mode. So I'm in degrees, good. So if you have a smart calculator like this one, you want to first make sure press mode and then make sure you're in degrees. Radians are used later on. Okay, so we'll, we'll learn about those later on in math. So you just punch it in 12, 10, and 43. So x equals 11.2, since we're solving for the nearest tenth. So this is a really useful tool. We can find out what a side length is if we have the degrees and we have one side, because tangent is a ratio um, from one side to the next really important um, that we have this in triangles um, because you can only have 180 degrees in a triangle okay and again these are all right triangles okay so this one we have two options we can do tangent of 51 equals x over 10 or we could do tangent of 39 equals 10 over x. And just like how we did it with uh, the first three uh, problems, if we used angle A or angle B, they would just be uh, reciprocals of each other. So I can use either of these angles, just so long as I'm setting them up correctly, and I'll get the same answer. So I'll just use the first one, 10, 10, 51 equals x. Or if you use the second one, you would have um, Let's see, I would multiply, I'd get x tan 39 equals 10. I would do x equals 10 divided by tan 39. Okay. So just punch that in, 10 tan of 51. Oops, I hit a button wrong. 10 tan 51, you get 12.3. And then if I do it the other way, 10 divided by 10, 39, it's the same answer, okay? So that it works. Okay, um, I will let you guys do number 6 and 7, and I'll look at 8, only because there's a decimal in there. Let's do 8 together. So I have my, my angle, it's 37 degrees. Um... I'm going to do opposite over adjacent. Okay, so to solve for x, I multiply by 2.1. So I get 2.1 tan of 37 equals x. So x equals 1.6. Okay, good. Let's move on. Let's look at number 10. It's a word problem. So we're serving to find the distance from the boathouse on shore to the cabin on the island. A surveyor measures from the boathouse to point X as shown. Okay, so they are measuring the distance from the boathouse to point X. Okay, it's 30 yards. So this is 30 yards. This is number 10. This point X right here. And then finds measure of angle X with an instrument called the transit. Okay, have you ever seen those road surveyor guys out in the field, out in the uh, on the road? They're they're using transits. Use the surveyor's measurements to find the distance from the boathouse, so from here to the cabin down here. Okay, so this is a very good example of tangent. 
we have a right angle here. I have my measure, 10 of 59 equals my unknown distance over 30. So to solve for x, I just need to multiply by 30. So 30, 10 of 59. The distance is, um, because they gave us a whole number here, um, I got 49.92, I'll round it up to yards, so it's about 50 yards, okay? Alright, let's turn the page, look at the next problem. Okay, this is, we're going to go, we went one way with tangent, now we're going to go the opposite way with tangent. So, before we had, we had the angle and we were trying to find a missing side length. Now we have the side lengths. And we're trying to find the missing angle. So I got tangent of x equals 7 over 11. So what I can do is apply something called the inverse tangent, and it undoes tangent. Okay, so what I, to get x, this looks like fancy language. It's just, it's called an inverse. So this is the inverse of tangent of tangent of x equals the inverse tangent of 7 over 11. These will undo each other. I get x equals the inverse tangent of 7 over 11. Okay, that may seem like some foreign language, but it's really just a button in your calculator. You have tangent. If I press the yellow second button and then press tangent, I get the inverse. Okay, this will give me the angle. So the angle here is going to be 30 to, and it wants it to the nearest degree, so x equals 32 degrees. So let's try that with a different one. We're not going to use the inverse language here. No, I'm sorry, the inverse um, notation like I did. So I, 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 I have the side lengths. I'm trying to find x. This is my right angle. So I'm just going to do inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent side. So inverse tangent of 8 over 5 which is 1.6, and to the nearest degree, that's going to be 58 degrees. Okay, um, I'll let you try 13. I'm going to do 15, because there's a rational. So here's my triangle. I have 3 root 5, and 3 are 2 of my sides. So to get... Um, Okay, this is, this is kind of a two-part process. I'm given the hypotenuse. Um, I want to find out what x is. I can only use tangent. Therefore, I need this side right here first. So I need to find this side length. Remember that um, in a triangle, you have the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We'll call 3a, so 3 squared. We'll call the side b, so that's b squared. And then I have my last part, 3 root 5 squared. 3 squared is 9, plus b squared. This, the, the squared distributes to each of these since they're being multiplied, so this is 9 times 5. That's 3 squared times the square root of 5 squared. So this is 9 plus b squared equals 45. Subtract the 9, b squared equals 36. b equals 6. Okay, now I can do my tangent to find out what x is. I'm going to do the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent side, 6 over 3. So the opposite, the inverse tangent of basically 2 is 63.43, which simplifies to 63 degrees. Okay, let's look at another one because that was a bit, a bit complicated. There's 16. Alright, this time, this one's actually a little bit simpler. Okay, so I need to find out what this guy is. We'll call this A. So do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. B squared is the other side, so that's 11 squared, which is 121. C squared, so the square root the square of a square root, the square of the square root of 170 is just 170. 
Subtract the 129, that's 49. So A equals 7. Good, so I've got my sides. So to get X, I do inverse tangent of opposite over the adjacent. 11 over 7. So the nearest degree would be 58 degrees. Okay, let's look at um, number 17. Find the missing value to the nearest tenth. Tangent of, let's call it x, equals 3.5. Um, so how do I get to x? How do I get the x? Okay, so recall that, let's just make a triangle here. Um, I can stick a 1 over that. You can't even see that. I can stick a 1 over that. It's still 3.5. So remember that uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if I call that x, then this is 3.5, and that's 1. So if I'm trying to figure out what x is, all I need to do is the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. I didn't even really need to draw the triangle, but it's nice to see things. The inverse tangent of 3.5 is 74 degrees. Oh, and this time they want it to the nearest tenth, so that would be 74.1. 7, Tangent of 34 equals x over 20. I'm solving for x, so I'll multiply by 20 to get x. So let's plug this one in your calculator. 20 tan of 34 is 13.5. Next one, number 19. I have tan of 2 equals 4 over x. I'm solving for x, so I'm going to multiply. Um, one way is you can multiply this and then divide by tan 2. Another way is you can just take this whole equation and put the entire thing upside down. So I'm going to put a 1 over that. I'm flipping the whole thing upside down. It's a perfectly legal maneuver. It's still, uh, they're still equal to each other. If I flip both sides, upside down. They're still equal to each other. It's like adding one to each side. It's, it's perfectly legal. So at this point I'm solving for x, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. So I get 4 over tan 2 equals x. So let me punch that into the calculator here. Um, x is a very large number, which is okay because we're looking at tangent of 2. So if you kind of draw that out, you really have a triangle that is a very long side. Okay, 2 degrees is a very small angle. So if this is 4, that means that this side must be very long. So that's going to be 114. Alright, number 20, last one. Tangent of x equals 90. Um, so I can do, at this moment, I can do the inverse of each. So I get x equals inverse tan of 90. Punch that into the calculator. That is 89.36. That's our, well, let's do four. That's our answer. All right, so you get to try to apply your skills. Have fun doing that, and I'll see you for the next lesson. See you guys.